as we continue with uh, Congressmember Grijalva and, uh, and a new guest. Juan? Well, immigration reform and the DREAM Act are on shaky ground following the midterm results and the new reality of the Republican-controlled House. Well, a new investigation published in the Texas Observer today looks into one aspect of the collateral damage of our current immigration laws that result in tens of thousands of unaccompanied migrant children being deported to Mexico every year. Many of these children are abandoned on the streets of Mexican border cities and end up in shelters in areas that have been ravaged by escalating drug violence. The investigation found that the majority of the children who were deported keep trying to re-enter the United States for work, a better life, or to be reunited with their families. But they also get caught in the midst of the so-called war on drugs and risk kidnapping and extortion as they try to cross the border along routes maintained by powerful drug cartels. Well, for a picture of what happens to the deported kids and the dangers they faced, we're joined now from Austin, Texas, by Texas Observer reporter Melissa Del Bosque. Her investigation, supported by the Nation Investigation fund is called Children of the Exodus. If you very briefly, Melissa, might just lay out for us this really tragic story. Sure. Um, back in 2008, Mexican Congress uh, is issued a report that more than 90,000 children had been deported by U.S. authorities, and more than 13,000 of those kids were never reunited with their families. And when that report came out, it was initially what got me interested in, in going to Mexico and finding out what was happening to children after they were deported. And, uh, and my findings were that they're basically caught up in this endless cycle of, of going through these shelters and trying to get back across the river to family members on the U.S. side. And what, uh, what cities uh, did you go into, and uh, could you tell us about some of the stories that you uh, uncovered? Sure. Um, I went to Reynosa and Matamoros, which are on the Texas border, across from the Texas cities of McAllen and Reynosa—I mean, and uh, Matamoros—Brownsville, uh, I'm sorry. And, um, and I was working in shelters there that are run by Mexican Social Services. And the way that it works is that when U.S. Border Patrol returns uh, Mexican children to the Mexican side of the border, they go into these government-run shelters. But what happens is that um, family members or smugglers take the children out of these shelters, and then they are returned to the streets. and. They're caught up in this cycle of trying to get back across the border. So I talked to um, more than 20 children, uh, a lot of teenagers, um, one 16-year-old boy uh, that comes to mind. His family lives just, I think, 35 miles away on the U.S. side of the border, and he'd been trying to get across for six months and had been caught several times, and uh, his stepfather is a U.S. citizen, so he would drive over to Mexico and give him money to pay the smugglers to try and come back across again, and he, he kept getting caught. So um, these children are sort of caught in this sort of untenable situation where uh, the cartel violence is worsening on the Mexican side of the border, and then the security is stiffening on the U.S. side of the border. And it's becoming more dangerous and more dangerous to cross. Melissa, you began your piece um, by saying, in hindsight, it seems appropriate that the Dia de los Muertos, uh, the Day of the Dead, and the midterm election fell on the same day. And what does uh, the Republican sweep of the House mean for immigration reform? Well, I mean, listening to Congressman Grijalva earlier in the show is, I have to say, reinforced my sort of pessimism about this logjam uh, around immigration reform. Uh, when I was in Mexico, it became painfully clear to me, and what I've been trying to do is sort of maintain the, the human face of, of immigration, which I think has really been lost in the sort of political divisiveness over, over immigration, um, that— uh, you know, there needs to be some sort of comprehensive immigration reform and some kind of family reunification process, because a lot of these kids I was talking to had family members who were either permanent residents or, um, or U.S. citizens. And there's millions of families in the United States right now that have mixed 
uh, citizenship. So if there were some way that these children could be reunified in the United States through some sort of comprehensive immigration reform, it would make, I think, a, a, a huge difference um, and save lives. But I, uh, I mean, listening to Congressman Grijalva um, and just the divisiveness that I saw during this midterm election, well, I'm, I'm pretty pessimistic. I want to end with Congressmember Grijalva. I want to end with Congressmember Grijalva, but play this ad that appeared in Nevada, uh, which uh, did get some attention, and ask you about it and where this means we go in the next two years. This November, we need to send a message to all politicians. If they didn't keep their promise on immigration reform, then they can't count on our vote. Democratic leaders must pay for their broken promises and betrayals. If we just go on supporting them again this November, they will keep playing games with our future and taking our vote for granted. Don't vote this November. This is the only way to send them a clear message. You can no longer take us for granted. Quite a remarkable ad paid for by a group called Latinos for Reform, headed by Robert uh, de Posada, the former director of Hispanic Affairs for the Republican National Committee. Congressmember Gajalva, we just have 30 seconds. Uh, the, the message, of course, don't vote. Um, what does this mean for the next few years? Well, it's cynical. And, and what it means, though, is that I think uh, Democrats and, and progressives in general have to do a better job of defining uh, who's who in this whole immigration debate. Uh, the immigration, immigrants, was used as a, as a weapon through this whole uh, midterm elections over and over again, and the faceless, uh, no identity to people. Uh, it was used over and over again, certainly used in my race and many races across the country. And I, I, I think we have to do a much better job of defining who's who in this debate. And we haven't done it. We've been afraid of the issue. I agree with that. Uh, I think we just have to step up and be part Promise, of the Congress human Congressman face Congressman we're going to have to leave it there. I thank you very much for joining us from thank Tucson you. and Melissa Del Bosque for joining us from Austin. We'll link to your piece in the Texas Observer. That does it for the show. The piece was called Children of the Exodus. Tonight I'll be speaking at 6.30 at the Catskill Community Theater on Main Street in Catskill, New York. Hope to see people there tomorrow night in Boulder and Sunday in San Francisco. Check our website. Democracy Now! Produced by Mike Berkshire, Fotocaduce, Armante, Andrew Comet, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.